Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today's review is at Port Baddock Golf Club in North West Wales. The course is half parkland and half links, um, which does make this for a really interesting challenge for pretty much every level of golfer. The course is roughly five minutes outside of Port Maddock and off the yellow tees today, the course will play a little over 6,000 yards and is a par 71. As normal, we will get into the review. So we'll score out of five based on the general feeling facilities, the condition, the layout, the course difficulty, and also the value of the round. For the general feeling facilities, this is a really sort of impressive golf looking golf course with all the usual amenities. There's a really good warm up and practice area. There's a there's a small driving range. It has a little bit of a walk just to get there from the clubhouse. The clubhouse itself is, again, reasonably acceptable. You've got a good pro shop as well, which is kitted out pretty nicely. So no real complaints here. For the course condition, again, I've given this a score of four out of five. Generally speaking, the course was in pretty good condition. The fairways were pretty consistent. The greens were really, really good. No real sort of obvious signs of damage. It didn't feel particularly overplayed. Um, the tee boxes were really well presented. There was a couple of rough patches here and there, but really nothing to sort of shout out about. For the layout of the course, I've given this a three out of five. It's split into two halves, so the front nine plays a bit more part than style, and the back nine plays like a real true links course. There is a real noticeable difference between the two halves. I do like that sort of mixture between the two halves. The front nine plays a little bit easier and it does give a little bit of a full sense of security compared to the back nine. The back nine has, as I mentioned, that sort of typical Lynx feel. Lots of blind shots, really good sort of stunning views out to sea. And if you do get the conditions like we had on the day, it does make it for a really tough back nine. To be perfectly honest, the front nine doesn't play as sort of as interesting as the back nine. It is a bit sort of up and down and quite a few sort of straight long holes, which isn't the most of interest in front nines, but when it does come to the back, it really does make up for that sort of lack of interest. Onto the difficulty, I've given this a score of four out of five as well. I would give the front nine a five as this is quite a nice challenge, a little bit easier. There are some tight fairways, a little bit of forgiving rough, but the back nine is completely different. Um, it is a super punishing Lynx course, and it, I would have given a three on this one, but just because I feel like it is a little bit too hard. As I mentioned, especially because of the conditions that we had on the day, we were playing with high winds, and it really did make it for a tough finish. And finally, onto the value. We paid £60 for the round at the beginning of June this year. I do feel like it was a good experience, I'm glad we played it and I would definitely be willing to play this again, hopefully with some better conditions. I do feel like £60 is probably the maximum that I would be willing to pay. So on that note, I am going to give that a score of 3 out of 5. Certainly worth playing if you do get the opportunity to play it, however I do feel like I would try and play some other courses in the area if given the opportunity. So this gives Port Maddock Golf Club a score of 18 out of 25. If you've made it this far, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also put any comments down below, any courses that you want to be reviewed next. Um, next we're going to get into each of the 18 holes and I'll give a bit of a strategy just around each of the holes. Hole 1 and a par 4 to open up with. Uh, on this hole you will be advantaged the further down the fairway you are. At roughly 220 yards though, you will hit some trees down the left hand side. So ideally I would stay down the right hand side of this, this fairway as it will be a little bit more forgiving that side. I would also probably aim to play a little bit short of these trees. This will leave you a slightly longer shot into the green, but this should be no more than about 150 yards. For the approach shot, you will just need to be mindful of the stream that is running across the front of the green. So I would recommend just taking a little bit extra, so either playing the yardage to at least the middle of the green, ideally to the back, so if you do miss anything short, you will likely get over the stream. The mist of this green is actually over to the right hand side. Over to the left you'll find green bushes and anything too long again, you're going to find bushes and it will likely result in losing your ball. Once you get to the green though, the green generally slopes down towards the front left of this green as you approach it. 
do expect quite a bit of movement from most putts around this green and if you are putting down to the front of the green pace control is going to be essential here for getting down in two. Hole two and a good length par three here. I did find it slightly interesting that this is actually a square green. I don't think I've found any other square greens on any of the other courses I've played. As with the previous hole, you will need to be mindful of the stream that is cutting across the fairway. This time it cuts at a sort of diagonally up to the wards the right there. So with this in mind, I would just aim to the left hand side of this green. If you do happen to play a bit of a slice, this will give you plenty of room for error on this hole. Once you get to the green, there's plenty of undulations to this green. If you have the pin where it was on our day, in that sort of bottom right corner, it is almost on its own little platform. There are plenty of undulations, so do expect quite a bit of movement around this green. It isn't an easy green to get sort of up and down with. After a bit of a short walk and crossing over the road, you'll find yourself with a lengthy par 5. Off the tee, it is pretty essential that you find the fairway. You have out of bounds all the way down the left and mounds of thick gorse all the way down the right. So play the club that you, gives you the best chance of finding the fairway. Rather than going for distance, you probably need to gonna have the three shots to get to the green anyway. Ideally, you would keep this around 220 to 230 yards. From here, you're just gonna want to lay up and there is a path that is cutting across the fairway at about 130 yards from the middle of the green. This should leave you obviously with no more than a wedge for most players. If not, just lay up short of this path and it will leave you a slightly longer iron in. You will want to get past the three bunkers that are at the front of the green though, so just play enough club for that approach to the green. I would recommend just playing the yardage to the middle of the green on this one, as this will get you past the bunkers that are sitting at the front of the green. The green itself generally slopes away from you as you approach it, so just be mindful of anything hit a little bit too long, it will just fly the back of the green. But don't expect too much movement, but you are going to have to be mindful of pace control on this green. Hole four and a lengthy par four with a slight dog leg to the left. Off the tee, you have two options. Option one and slightly more difficult one, you have a tree on the right hand side of this fairway and if you can get past that, it's sitting at about 220 yards off the yellow tees. The fairway does widen past this point so it isn't the end of the world if you do slightly miss hit it, but again, just be mindful of that out of bounds all the way down the left. Option two is to lay up short of this, so I would recommend just playing about a 200 yard shot, but it will leave you with quite a long shot into the green. This is actually the more sensible option, just because it is stroking next two, so for most golfers you're likely going to have at least one or two shots on this hole, and that way you can play it like a short par five. The further you go down the fairway towards the green, the fairway really does narrow in. So I would recommend just playing the yardage to the middle or to the back of the green just to avoid that narrowing of the fairway. The green itself has plenty of space around it, so anything missed probably won't be too punishing. There are quite a few undulations and, and mounds around the green, so it will leave you with a tough up and down, but it certainly is doable. The green itself is pretty flat, it does slope a little bit down towards the front of this green, so don't expect too much movement, but you will need to commit to the putts if you are putting uphill. Hole five, and a really good risk and reward hole here. This dog legs at 45 degrees to the right. You do have the option of cutting the corner off, but you're gonna to need to carry at least 220 to 230 yards to make the fairway. Sensible option here is to play to the turn. So I would recommend playing about a 200 yard shot and trying to keep it right in the middle of the fairway. Anything right here, you're gonna find water. Anything out to the left, you are gonna find out of bounds. If you do take the sort of shorter option, you are going to be left with a fairly lengthy shot into the green. But if you can cut the corner, missing right really isn't an option, and also missing too long isn't an option here, so it is going to have to be a very well judged shot. For the approach to the green, I would recommend just playing the yardage to the middle of the green. Anything missed short probably isn't going to be too damaging, as long as you're not too far right of the tree that is sitting at the front of the green. 
You do have trees and a bunker down the right hand side there, so if anything take aim to the left hand side and this will just avoid this trouble. The green generally slopes down towards the front of the green, so do expect a bit of movement, but if you, especially if you are putting across, but again a hole that is really going to be pace control driven to get yourself to down two foot. Hole 6, and a relatively short par through here, here, but the difficulty here, here is that it plays pretty much like an island green. It's almost completely surrounded by water. I would recommend just aiming for the middle of the green and playing the yardage to the middle of the green. This way, anything that is slightly missed hit, it probably won't be too damaging and it will probably hold a green. Once you get to the green though, this is like an upturned down saw. So, so you, again, you're probably not going to find too much movement around this green, but you will need to commit to the line of the putt. When we played, there was a drop zone out to the sort of back right of this green. So if you do find water, then that is your place to go and hit. Wasn't exactly too obvious when you approach it, but it is there if you need it. Hole seven and a good length par five here. The best option off the tee would be just to lay up short of the two fairway bunkers that are down your right hand side. The first one comes at roughly 220 yards, but you are gonna need at least 250 yards to make it past both of these bunkers. If you do take that option, you are rewarded as the fairway does open up past this point. If you do take the option of playing short, the aim for the second shot is just to get to the path that is cutting across the fairway. This should leave you with only roughly 120 yards into the middle of the green. For the approach to the green though, I would recommend just playing the yardage to the middle of the green. Anything missed short here will leave you with a fairly sort of easier shot up and down. Anything missed too long, you will find some trees and also a building. The green itself is a split tier green with the back portion of the green being the higher of the two. There is only a sort of foot difference between the two portions and depending where the pin is, it is pretty flat on both portions of the green. Hole eight and a shorter par five again, but you are gonna have to pot your way around this as it is shaped like a boomerang. Off the tee, I would recommend just playing a 200 yard shot just to try and keep your ball to the left hand side of the four fairway bunkers that are lying in the right hand side of this fairway. If you are going to miss this fairway, being completely long and right will only allow you to find the further fairway, which will leave you a good opportunity to get back onto the fairway from here. For the second shot, I would recommend just playing the yardage that is going to leave you 110 to 120 yards to the middle of the green. What you're trying to do is actually find yourself between a, a path and a stream that are cutting across the fairway. For the approach to the green, you are playing up to an elevated green, so I would recommend just taking an extra club or just playing the yardage to the back of the green. There's three bunkers that are protecting the front of this green, two left and one right. This is quite a narrow green, but it is quite long, so distance, distance control isn't too much of an issue here. The miss is actually long and left, as there is a bank to the left hand side of this green, so it will help you get a little bit closer to the green if you do miss down there. The green itself generally slopes down towards the front of the green, so do expect some movement if you're putting across, and it will also be very slippery if you are putting downhill. Hole 9, and a tough par 3 here, even though it is stroke index 18. You are playing from an elevated tee box, and the green is completely surrounded by bunkers, which you will want to try and avoid if you are looking at getting, getting down the par. There is also a stream cutting right across the front of this green, so I would recommend playing at least the yardage to the middle of the green, if not the middle of the green, just because long here is actually not the end of the world. You will also find that the green itself is actually another square green and it is quite flat for most angles so don't expect too much movement around this green. Hole 10, and the main aim here is to find the fairway. It is quite a tight fairway and you really don't have much of a view of this off the tee. There's two fairway bunkers sitting at about 200 yards down the right hand side. Anything beyond the path that is down the left is out of bounds. The path cuts across the fairway at roughly 210 yards, so you will ideally leave it short of the path. 
the fairway remains quite tight after this so I would, you would need to have an accurate drive if you are going to try and play over 210 yards. You are only left with about 160 yards to the middle of the green if you are short of the pack. So for the, the approach to the green, I would just play the yardage to at least the middle of the green. This should eliminate the four bunkers that are sitting at the front of this green. Two sit at the entrance, one left and one right, and the other two sit just in front of those, so a little bit off the, off the front of the green. The difficulty for the approach shot is there is a big mound sitting right at the front of this green. The green wraps around this mound and if the pin is towards the back right of this green you will probably be blocked from seeing it. The green generally slopes down towards the front left of this green as you approach it. There are quite a few undulations, there is a spine that pretty much runs across the middle of the green. So do expect a bit of movement and again pace control is going to be essential for getting your down in two putts here. Hole 11 and a long and tough par 3 here. Coming away with a bogey is actually a pretty decent result. There isn't really a good miss to this green. There is a small channel running across the front right of this green. There's out of bounds all the way down the left and with two bunkers short and out of bounds also towards the back of the green. So I would recommend just playing the yardage to the middle of the green just to give yourself the best opportunity here. Anything miss actually big right is probably going to be the best miss. The green itself is quite a good size and generally does slope from back to front right. This green is pretty flat so don't expect too much movement around this green. But once you are done, a really great opportunity to appreciate the views that you get from the green. Hole 12 and a really interesting risk and reward hole here. This is only a short par 4 and for the longer hitters it would actually be reachable on the right day. However, I would not recommend doing this as the green is completely surrounded by trouble. The safe option off the tee though is just to find the fairway that is below the tee box. You will only need to play about 150 yards to factor in the elevation change. I would just aim towards the right hand side of this fairway as there is quite a bit more space and it will also avoid the out of bounds that is all the way down the left. This should only leave you with a sort of short wedge up into the green. The approach shot plays uphill um, so I would recommend just playing the yardage to the back of the green or taking at least one extra club for the yardage. There isn't a particular great miss, anything out to the right maybe but there is a bunker sat at the front of this green, which you'll see is awful. And anything long and left, you will definitely not find that ball just due to the gorse that's sitting there. The green has plenty of movement and generally slopes down towards the front of this green, filtering into that bunker. The green is quite wide, but isn't particularly deep. So yardage control is going to be essential for giving yourself the best opportunity to get down in par. Hole 13, and after a bit of a walk up towards the tee box, you are faced with a really challenging par 3. The green is quite significantly below you from the tee box, and you will need you to take at least one club, if not two clubs, to, for the yardage that you're playing towards the middle of the green. I would recommend just playing the yardage to the front of the green. This should give you the sort of biggest room for error. You do have a bit more space out to the right hand side and long on this hole. The green itself slopes quite considerably down towards the back of this green. There is plenty of movement to this green. If anything, it slopes a little bit down towards the right hand side of this green as you approach it. This is going to be a really difficult green to read as well, so just be mindful of that. Hole 14 and definitely the hardest hole on the golf course. From the tee box you're left with a completely blind shot over the dunes. You do have the aiming post and you will need to be very accurate. If you are anything slightly missed either right or left this is only going to find the gorse and another set of dunes. Left is a little bit better if anything so if you are right at all of the aiming post this will probably result in you losing your ball. You're going to need at least 160 yards to make it past the dune, so I would recommend playing about 200 yards just to give yourself enough chance to get past this dune. 
If you can actually find the fairway here, you have another really difficult shot towards the green. There are three bunkers that are sitting just at the front of the green, roughly about 70 to 40 yards out from the green. There's also two bunkers sat at the front of this green too, which only makes matters worse as you have out of bounds all the way left and also out of bounds anything long of this hole as well. So I would recommend just playing the yards to the middle of the green. The mist to this green is actually to the right hand side, but the green is actually quite a fair size and generally does slope down towards the front of this green. There's a few small undulations, but I wouldn't expect too much movement from this green. My apologies that I didn't actually finish playing this hole. I had already lost three balls by the time I'd got to off the dunes. Hole 15, and a hole that you will be at an advantage the further down the fairway you are. You will need to take aim at the left hand side of the bush in the distance. This bush sits at about 150 to 160 yards, and just trying to get past that will leave you with a really good shot in. If you can carry over 230 yards, the fairway does open out, especially down that left hand side. And this will be the best position for trying to attack the green. This is another green that is hidden by dunes. The green is angled diagonally up towards the right and is a very narrow gap to actually get through. You may find it easy to lay up just towards the entrance of the green if you are actually in doubt. If you can play for the green, the, I would recommend just playing the yards to the middle of the green. The green does widen towards the back of the green and has banks all the way around it, which may actually help you. The green is like an upturned down saucer with runoff areas pretty much around most of the way around this green. Not too much movement, but you will likely find yourself with an uphill putt, so you will have to commit to it. Hole 16, and a relatively short par four here, and a great opportunity just to admire the views that are behind the tee box. Off the tee, I would recommend playing a club no more than about 180 yards, as this will help to find the widest part of the fairway. Anything after this, the fairway just narrows down and just brings in the rough down either side. This should leave you no more than about 120, 130 yards into the green. So for the longer hitters, you can try and get as far down as possible, but it is going to need to be a very accurate shot. For the approach to the green though, I would recommend just playing the yards to the middle of the green. This should also help to avoid the three bunkers that are sat at the front of this green. You will have more space out towards the right and actually missing long here isn't going to be the end of the world. The green is quite a generous size and again pretty flat from most angles, so don't expect too much movement around this green. Hole 17 and a short par 5 here, however this is actually a really tough tee shot. This is quite a narrow gap that you have to try and find and with thick gorse and trees lining either side of the fairway. There is a road cutting across the fairway at roughly 170 yards and the fairway does open up past this point. So I would recommend taking at least a, a club that's only 180 yards if not nearer 200 yards. For the second shot you will just be best to lay up to a comfortable yardage that you want into the green. The fairway actually opens up out to the right hand side no more than about 75 yards into the green so if you are going to miss that is your safe place to miss out to the right of this green. The green is actually tucked a little bit round the left of this hole so you will be at a better angle if you are towards the right hand side of the fairway. I would just recommend playing the yardage to the middle of the green. This green has very little room for error although there is a bank at at the back of the green as you approach it which does offer you some form of backstop but the green is like an upturned down saucer again and you will find quite a bit more movement around this green but you will find an uphill putt for most angles around this green and finally hole 18 a nice hole to finish off with you will want to take aim at the houses at the back this is actually quite a narrow gap again to find the fairway the hole has a path that runs all the way down the right hand side and anything right of that, the sort of rough and gorse. There are two fairway bunkers down the left hand side at roughly 200 to 230 yards. And you will just want to try and find the gap between these bunkers ideally. This should only leave you with about 150 to 160 yards into the green. For the longer hitters, you can take on this last bunker as the fairway does completely open out and it is the first fairway that you'll find. For the approach to the green, you have two bunkers either side of the green, so I would recommend just playing the yardage to the front of this green 
as this will help so you actually miss these. If you are at the front of the green, this will leave you with an uphill putt. The green does slope down towards the front of this green with the back third of it actually being quite flat. So I wouldn't expect too much movement around this green, but again, pace control is gonna be essential for getting down in two putts.